Good afternoon. I'm Don Herring, and I'm chairman of the Oslo Civic Affairs Committee. We welcome you here today for this observance. The Civic Affairs Committee holds an annual ceremony on 9-11 to remember the victims of September 11, 2001. The ceremony also includes remembrance of persons killed in the war on terror and subsequent con connected operations. A number of those remembered have a direct connection with our military installation here. This is the Freedom Fountain, and in 2012, the Onslow Civic Affairs Committee dedicated this fountain to all those who passed through Onslow County in service to our country and to our community. A number of those persons who died in Mississippi have passed through our community in service to their nation. It is therefore fitting and right for the Onslow Civic Affairs Committee to recognize those who died as a result of the events of July 10th that ended with a crash in a rural field in Mississippi. The full circumstances of this tragic incident are unknown to us. What is known is that they died serving their country. We have been able to benefit from the news account for those of those who have passed, and for others we only have an official record which has just been released hours ago. While not all of their stories will be available to us at this time, we remember them nonetheless. We hold each in our hearts and in appreciation for their service to our nation. At this time, we'd like to ask committee member Sandy Wyatt to lead us in prayer. Please bow your head. Almighty God, in whose perfect kingdom no sword is drawn, but the sword of righteousness, no strength is known, but the strength of love. Let us pray that actions that left these 16 dead are never repeated. Let us pray that you mightily speed abroad your spirit, that all peoples may be gathered under the banner of peace. Lord, we request your blessing upon this observance. We pray that those who stand to represent victims worthily portray our honor of their sacrifices. And we pray that we hold their lives as a call for peace in our earthly world. Amen. Sergeant Dietrich A. Schmiemann. The 26-year-old Dietrich joined the Marine Corps at age 19 with an ambition to serve in special operations, according to his father. He was assigned to the 2nd Raider Battalion Special Operations Command. Dietrich grew up in Richland, Washington, and enlisted after completing an academic program that allows students to earn a college associate's degree while they finish high school, his father remembers. The most common comments his friends have made about him were that he helped them and he inspired them to live their life to the fullest, his father said, and he certainly did that himself. Eric said his son served in a reconnaissance unit before joining the elite Raider Command about two years ago. The Reverend Corey Smith of Richland Lutheran Church, who was Dietrich's youth pastor from sixth grade until he enlisted, said that the young man joined the Marines out of a desire to serve others. That's the kind of heart he had, he said in a phone interview. He loved to help people. Captain Sean E. Elliott. Sean was one of the plane's pilots who had a longtime love affair with the C-130, according to his father. John Elliott said that his son used to take the model C-130 loaded with toy soldiers to bed when he was four. John said he slept with it like he would a teddy bear. He was assigned to the Marine Corps Squadron at Stewart Air National Guard Base in Newburgh, New York. His mother, Cynthia, said her son was enamored with aircraft and the military, at least since he was attending a chi as a, a childhood during an air show. A prep standout in tennis, the six foot two inch Elliot was renowned for a booming service, for a booming serve 
His younger brother, Eric, went pro, but Sean went to the officer school instead, graduating from the University of California in Davis. He always was looking out for others, starting with me, but then continuing to his fraternity brothers and his Marines, Eric said. Elliot got his Marine Corps call sign Puffin because he refused to hunt the nesting and defenseless birds during a stopover in Iceland, his father said. Major K. M. Goyet. Major Goyet was 23 and promoted to that rank in 2012. He was the aircraft commander and, stir and served in Operation Enduring Freedom during 2005. He was assigned to the Marine Corps Squadron at Stewart Air National Guard Base in Newburgh, New York. He was an aircraft commander who served three overseas deployments, the most recent ending in 2014. Kane received many awards and decorations, including three Navy and Marine Corps Commendation Medals and the selected Marine Corps Reserve Medal. He was assigned to Marine Forces Reserve in the 4th Marine Air Wing. Petty Officer 2nd Class Ryan Lorry. Ryan was a high school football standout in Indiana who had gotten married just a, a few weeks ago. He was assigned to 2nd Raider Battalion Special Operations Command. His father, Michael Lorry, said that his son enlisted in the Navy after high school and survived two tours overseas in Iraq and Afghanistan, making his death on the way to training all the more tragic. Lorry said his son, who had two children of his own, wanted to use his skills as a medic to eventually pursue a career in nursing. The younger Lori was married in early July and June. A high school football and golf teammate, Chris Parrish, told the newspaper that the Navy corpsman had a fearless streak when it came to BMX biking, skateboarding, and rollerblading. Ryan wasn't scared of anything, Parrish said. That's probably why he was good in the Navy. Staff Sergeant William Joseph Kundrat. William, 33 years of age, grew up in Frederick, Maryland, where his Marine parents, Joseph and Linda, still live. He was assigned to the 2nd Raider Battalion Special Operations Command. Every breath of air you take, all the things you're able to do, you can do those things because of people like my son, his mother said. I'll never forget that. William graduated in 2002 from Governor Thomas Johnson High School in Frederick, where he played football and lacrosse. He was also an Eagle Scout. After graduation, he joined the Marines, and in 2004, he married classmate Ashley Kreger. The two have two children together. William served in Iraq, later joining the Marine Corps Forces Special Operations Command. His mother said he was a great Marine. Corporal Colin J. Schaaf. Colin was promoted to Corporal December 1st in 2015. His home of record was Pierce, Washington. He worked as an aircraft ordnance technician. Colin was assigned to the Marine Corps Squadron at Stewart Air National Guard Base in Newburgh, New York. Gunnery Sergeant Brendan C. Johnson. 46-year-old Brendan recently told his father that he had the best job in the Marine Corps. He was assigned to the Marine Corps Squadron at Stewart Air National Guard Base in Newburgh, New York. His father, Kevin Johnson of Colchester, Vermont, recalled that his son said, I get to fly everywhere. His son traveled back and forth across the Atlantic and Pacific and toured many countries. Brendan joined the Marines after gra graduating from Johnson State College in Vermont. A fine arts major, he surprised the family with portraits he had painted based on old pictures of his grandfather and his father-in-law when they graduated Navy boot camp. The elder Johnson said, who is taking on more administrative work, was looking to retire next year. Plans included possibly returning to school for a master's degree and then moving from Newburgh, New York to Montana, home to his wife, Anna. He said, Brendan loved the outdoors and was considering a job as a park ranger or a fish and game warden. Mm -hmm. 
Sergeant Julian M. Kevian. 31-year-old Julian joined the Marines in 2009 because he wanted to protect and defend the country, his brother said. Carlo said his mother had been notified at 2 a.m. Tuesday. They said his plane went down and they weren't able to find him. He was assigned to the Marine Corps Squadron at Stewart Air National Guard Base in Newburgh, New York. A new con concrete walkway was poured this Tuesday at Carlo's home, where Julian's mother, Tina, has carved a tribute to her late son. Peace of my heart is in heaven. John Allen, a cousin of Julian's, told the Detroit News that Julian talked about joining the military when he was younger and said Julian could be quiet with people he didn't know, but once he was comfortable with you, he was a loud blast of fun. We don't have any words right now. We're hurting, his sister Tiana said. He was the best man. Julian, a flight engineer, was based at Stewart and lived with his wife, Sherry, in New Windsor, New York. Sergeant Owen J. Lennon. 26-year-old Owen Lennon grew up in Pomona, New York, playing football and tennis for Ramapo High School in Rockland County before graduating in 2008. His mother told a Pomona neighbor, Jeff Shear, that Owen had picked up an interest in mechanics and intended to work in aviation mechanics after finishing his service. He was assigned to the Marine Corps Squadron Stewart Air National Guard Base in Newburgh, New York. Owen's sister, Kelly, posted a remembrance on Facebook saying, you may have been the youngest, but we always looked up to you. Our hero, Owen Lennon, sending love to the other U.S. Marine Corps families that lost loved ones as well. Staff Sergeant Robert H. Cox. Staff Sergeant Cox was promoted to his rank in October 1st, 2016, and, as, and was assigned to 2nd Raider Battalion Special Operations Command. Robert worked as a critical skills operator and served in Operation Iraqi Freedom from 2009 to 2011 and in Operation Inherent Resolve from January to July of 2016. He had been deployed four times. Robert was a recipient of numerous awards and decorations including the Navy and Marine Corps Achievement Medal and National Defense Service Medal. Sergeant March A. Hopkins. Mark was 33 years old and from Montgomery, New York. He married his wife Patricia in 2014. He was assigned to the Marine Corps Squadron at Stewart Air National Guard Base in Newburgh, New York. He was one of the calmest and most easygoing Zen people in any walk of life person, said Russ Hardin, a former Marine sergeant who served as a navigator in the squadron. Hardin said he didn't know how to not be a friend and recalled that Mark preferred fishing, hiking, snorkeling, and scuba diving to the bar hopping habits of other troops posted to Japan. Mark graduated from Great Bridge High School in New York and attended American Military University before coming a Marine. His cousin Jessica said, he was beyond words, they are beyond words, by how heartbroken that this news is for everyone who loved him. Sergeant Joseph J. Murray. Joseph Murray was assigned to the 2nd Raider Battalion Special Operations Command. His family recalls him as a ukulele player, a former surfer kid, and a deeply religious family man who excelled in the Marine Corps. Terry Murray told reporters that the 26-year-old Special Operations Marine had been a surfer at Sandalwood High School in Jacksonville, Florida, who surprised his military veteran parents by joining the Marines. His father said Joseph was at the center of family life and his Marine units sharing his Christian faith by serving others and his country. Terry said one Marine told him that Joseph hummed praise songs constantly on patrol. When Joseph stopped singing praises, they took their safeties off their weapons because they immediately thought something was up. 
Joseph leaves a widow, Gail, and four children, a five-year-old, a three-year-old, and two twins at one year old. Sergeant Talon R. Leach. Talon was 27. He was assigned to the 2nd Raider Battalion Special Operations Command. He was promoted to sergeant on September 1, 2013. A friend on Facebook wrote, I can't believe that another good friend has taken from this realm. You will be extremely missed, my brother, and I hope that you are now in peace and walk side by side with the gods. Rest in peace, bro, and I hope to see you on the other side one day. Talon was married to Sarah and leaves behind his wife and parents, Denise and Tab, from Fulton, Missouri. Corporal Daniel I. Baldessari. Daniel was 23 and wanted to be a Marine since he was in middle school, according to his friend Dan McGowan. He actually would bring military gloves to football practice and play with them, his friend said, who drove Daniel to practice um, in high school every day. He was a patriot, and all he wanted to do was serve his country. Everyone had a lot of respect for Daniel. Daniel was assigned to the Marine Corps Squadron at Stewart Air National Guard Base in Newburgh, New York, and was on the crew for the C-130 that crashed in Mississippi. He grew up in suburban Colts Neck, New Jersey. Sergeant Joshua Snowden. Joshua was a flight engineer on the transport plane. He grew up in Dallas and graduated from Highland Park High School in 2014, having already signed up for the Marines. On Facebook, his sister Sarah wrote that her 31-year-old brother loved God, his family and friends, and his country. And he died serving country, his country and God. He was assigned to the Marine Corps Squadron at Stewart Air National Guard Base in Newburgh, New York. Joshua himself often displayed his Texas roots and the love of the Dallas Cowboys on Facebook, even while stationed at Stewart. I can tell you that Josh loved his family and friends, God, his country, and country, country western music and dancing, his Aunt Linda said. He was one of the warmest, kindest, more patriotic people I've ever known. Sergeant Chad E. Jensen. Chad Jensen was assigned to 2nd Raider Battalion Special Operations Command. He was promoted to the rank of sergeant on September 1, 2013. His home of record is Callaway, Missouri, and he received many awards and decorations, including the Navy and Marine Corps Achievement Medal. Chad had served in Operation Inherent Resolve from December 2015 to July 2016. Let us join now together in a moment of silence. And now, Chairman of the Civic Affairs Committee, Dr. Don Herring. Tragedies have a way of unifying us. They help us to see that we stand on common ground. Despite the horrific suffering on 9-11 and many other days, there's come a great outpouring of pride and strength in our country. Pride brings together unity, nationalism, and spirit. The strength has brought resolve compassion, and action. In 2001, after events of 9-11, a show of unity was exemplified by the members of Congress when they gathered on the steps of the Capitol and spontaneously sang, God bless America. At this time, would you please join as we sing together in God bless America.
Thank you for attending this observance. You're welcome to stay, meditate, and reflect here at the fountain, which is dedicated to those who serve.